Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fourth Southeast European Conference on Sustainable Development of Energy, Water, and Environment Systems. Um, I would just like to say that this session is recorded and it will be uh, uh, emitted on YouTube uh, live, broadcasted on YouTube live. So uh, uh, please, if you uh, don't have a possibility to follow us uh, uh, now, you can uh, do it also uh, later. Uh, you can see this nice picture behind me. It's Sarajevo, a beautiful city in Bosnia. Unfortunately, we are not, I'm not there today uh, because of uh, late changes to coronavirus epidemics. Three weeks ago, it look, uh, looked very well, situation in Bosnia, and we were hoping to come uh, to have a live conference. But unfortunately, uh, the things changed and uh, we had to go fully uh, online. Uh, coronavirus has changed our lives very much. The Zdevas conference has uh, uh, switched to online format, uh, or we are hoping uh, to uh, keep uh, some kind of uh, hybrid format in the future. Uh, but uh, uh, this is something that uh, we uh, unfortunately cannot control. Uh, but it's also interesting to see what Corona has done to uh, the topics of our uh, research. Uh, let's look at the energy demand. This is the biggest fall of uh, energy demand in 70 years. Uh, we can see that we had the big falls of demand in uh, very long time ago, but uh, for the last uh, 70 years, it was quite uh, 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 stable, uh, uh, the, the growth of uh, the demand. Uh, also, we can see that uh, demand, uh, fall of demand is uh, mainly concentrated in fossil fuels, uh, oil, gas, coal, while renewables are actually growing. So this is good for climate, this is good for uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, we just have to see how to keep these reductions continuous. Uh, we can also see that uh, uh, the production of, uh, of electricity from uh, low carbon sources is for the first time in the history bigger than the production from uh, coal. Uh, we can also see that uh, electricity demand has fallen down significantly uh, due to coronavirus, not so much as other fuels. Uh, we can also see that CO2 emissions have fallen down. Unfortunately, the fall down of CO2 emissions doesn't mean that the concentration of CO2 in atmosphere has fallen down for that emissions should be negative. Um, and that is not uh, uh, really what is happening. We have only reduction of CO2 uh, emissions. So unfortunately, the climate change continues. Um, I think also that uh, the waste has fallen down uh, uh, strongly, but uh, I, don't, I didn't find a good uh, graph. So uh, uh, coronavirus has done a relatively positive uh, results to the, uh, to the environment, but we have to be careful because uh, uh, s the, since the rebound that will come after uh, the end of uh, coronavirus uh, will be strong, we have to be careful to make this uh, rebound completely uh, green. I would like to uh, thank uh, Academy of uh, Science uh, and Arts of Bosnia and Herzegovina for being uh, 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 giving us patronage to this conference. And I would also like to thank uh, the main organizers of this conference, University of Zagreb, Institut Superior Tecnico and University of Sarajevo. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, executive organizers, uh, Zdevas Center uh, and uh, ACE Association of Consulting Engineers of Bosnia and Herzegovina who help us locally uh, very much. Uh, also, I would like to thank very much universities of Banja Luka, Tuzla, Mostar and uh, Bihać who helped us 
to promote this conference uh, with organizing small uh, conferences in February, just before uh, the corona uh, virus uh, started. Uh, I would like to thank our sponsors uh, and uh, uh, to see where the participants are coming from. Uh, we are expecting 185 participants, all of them uh, online, from 35 countries, 75 cities, and from around 100 uh, universities, institutes, and companies. Uh, you can see the countries. Uh, we have uh, a nice uh, spread of countries from all around the world, but mainly from Europe. This is Southeast European Conference, so that's uh, quite expectable. Um, Zdeves conference is a very, very long uh, conference series starting from 2002. We had, uh, uh, we started with yearly, then moved to, to biannual, and then went back to yearly conferences. Uh, and then we started Southeast European uh, conference series. This is the fourth one. We started also Latin American and Asia Pacific uh, conference series. And one of the uh, uh, important things is that uh, the number of participants is growing. For the 2020, you see only numbers for the uh, three regional conferences. So there will be one, the, the biggest one will be in Cologne in uh, September. Also, the important part of this conference is that we have very good relations with many journals. Uh, which are publishing special issues. Up to now, we publish 1,865 uh, papers, and we continue to do that uh, in uh, future. Uh, also, Zdeves has its own journal, uh, JS Davis, which is uh, uh, started from 2013. It's open access. It's in Scopus with 2.8 uh, site score. Um, and it's also in Web of Science core collection uh, emerging sources citation index since 2016. We hope we get um, impact factor this or next uh, year. Uh, I have a very sad uh, news. Uh, two of our uh, great members uh, of uh, International Scientific Committee, uh, uh, Professor Naim Afghan and Professor Maria Koshta has, uh, have passed away during uh, uh, last year, uh, during this year, uh, uh, since the last Southeast European uh, conference. Uh, we will have uh, several sessions uh, dedicated to Professor Naim Afghan, and also there will be an uh, online session on sustainable combustion dedicated to Professor Maria Koshta. Please uh, participate. Um, I would like to now invite uh, uh, our welcome addresses. Uh, uh, the first one is Professor Mish Mirza Kuslugic from uh, University of uh, Tuzla. Mirza, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here, participants and guests. We are witnessing dramatic changes in energy and digital technologies, which, among other things, require continuous and systematic restructuring of the current energy and power systems worldwide. Development of each country will depend on its ability to respond and adapt to new technological trends. Uncertainties of the changes and challenges is radical development shift covering now that the fourth industrial revolution brings along. Time and sound planning of the energy transition, a key component of the new industrial revolution, should be a core tool for managing such a complex structural transformation. Countries of the Western Balkans are at the crossroads regarding their long term energy future. Strategic decisions that will be made in the next few years will determine energy and economic perspectives of each country in the region for decades to come. Preparation of key documents for sustainable energy and climate development, for example, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where I come from, framework for new and sustainable development goals, long term climate and low emissions development strategy, 
the ability and the action plan for realization of national government contributions uh, according to the Paris Climate Agreement. And finally, the integrated national energy and climate plan clearly presents an opportunity to establish a platform for a constructive dialogue of key stakeholders in the energy sector in order to integrate different perspectives into energy transition planning process. The four current consultation during adoption processes that we mentioned documents in our country should involve not only decision and policy makers, meaning governments and parliaments, but also other stakeholders, namely opinion makers like the academic and expert community, also industry, media, civil society organizations, etc. The goal should be to achieve a wide social consensus about decisions regarding the energy transition vision, path based and strategy. The regional perspective should also be of the utmost importance in designing energy transition partners. Efficient transformation of the European power sector could only be achieved if energy transition is successfully implemented in the Southeast Europe, including the Western Balkans. The region can provide valuable flexibility sources for short, medium, and long term balancing of renewable renewables. But this service could only be provided for transition from coal to renewables is achieved in Southeast Europe region in the near future. As the energy transition in Southeast Europe is a win win situation also for Central and Eastern Europe. This is why we welcome a new initiative from the European Commission and European Parliament regarding a European wide implementation of the EU Green Deal, which includes our region as well. So I see this. Uh, Fourth Southeast Europe Conference of Dennis and Samir was a great opportunity to contribute to this dialogue in our region. Only through constructive and fast based discussions, we can find our ways to secure sustainable, affordable, and inclusive energy and climate future. I wish to all conference participants a successful work with a little bit of the, with the, with the help of the ICT technologies. And I wish all of you a warm virtual welcome to San Diego and to both Canada's. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mirza. Uh, now we will have uh, a word from a pre recorded word from uh, Professor Tarek Kupusovic, who is chair of the local organizing committee. Unfortunately, he is not here with us uh, due to emerging uh, health issues. Uh, but he is uh, very fine and uh, recovering, so uh, everything is uh, okay. But uh, uh, he will give his uh, talk uh, pre recorded. Please. There exists a deep blue river. It's wide and it is deep. A hundred years it is in width, and a thousand in its depth. For its length, you can't imagine. Gloom and darkness agonizing. There exists a deep blue river. There exists a deep blue river. We shall have to cross the river. From the poem Deep Blue River, Makdisdar, 1917-1971. He is on the banknote of 10 Bosnian convertible mark. That's Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you very much for your coming, at least in these Corona days virtually. So, the EU has developed a policy to support the gradual integration of the Western Balkan countries with the Union. On 1st July 2013, Croatia became the first of the seven countries to join, and Montenegro, Serbia, North Macedonia, and Albania are official candidates. Accession negotiations have been opened with Montenegro and Serbia. Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo are still only potential candidates. Unfortunately, Bosnia and Herzegovina currently does not have a national program for the adoption of EU acquis. Administrative capacity is weak and lacks effective coordination structures 
to manage the country's 14 governments. As a consequence, Bosnia and Herzegovina faces significant challenges in implementing and enforcing legislation stemming from its EU integration objectives. Considerable and sustained efforts are needed for the country to be able to assume the obligation of EU membership. Key EU priorities for Bosnia and Herzegovina are democracy and functionality, rule of law, fundamental rights and public administration reforms. That's from the Commission's opinion on Bosnia and Herzegovina's application for membership of the European Union from the May last year. Environmental ambitions of the new European Green Deal can only be fully effective if the EU's immediate neighbourhood also takes effective action. The EU Parliament recently calls on the EU, calls all EU institutions to use their influence, expertise and financial resources to mobilize Western Balkan countries to join it on a sustainable path. Then the European Commission to put in place a strategic economic and investment plan with a view to improving competitiveness, energy efficiency and generally sustainable development in the whole Western Balkan region. The EU's trade policy with the Western Balkans should be friendly for innovation and digitalization, as well as environmental and green technologies. But energy industry in the Western Balkans remained defined by outdated infrastructure, the overwhelming dominance of coal. EU calls for environmental impact assessments and public consultations on projects affecting protected areas, biodiversity and environmental protection, also taking into account local community views. Balkan countries have to take urgent measures for the monitoring, mitigation and prevention of the air and water pollution to ensure ex ante means what people want, strategic environmental assessment in order to secure sustainable hydropower and tourism development, balanced with the conservation efforts. All these are really excellent recommendations from the EU to the Western Balkan and specifically to the Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's up to our leaders and political parties to work on its implementation. But it is up to the people who elect them, means it's up to, to, pre it's up to prevailing public opinion, well informed and educated. It's up to the honest groups of individuals who are creating public opinion. It's up to us, up to intellectuals and professionals working in these sectors who wish to have an impact. We are working not only because it's our job, but because we truly believe in the message put in across. We want to help build a better world. Professional knowledge and expertise forms the foundation of our work. People will only ask for engineers' projects or advices if they think that engineers know more about the subject than they do. Professionals also need certain soft skills in order to make full use of that traditional knowledge. One must be able to see things from the client's and wider population's perspective and understand their actual requirements. But from the other side, Engineers have to integrate traditional knowledge that's the key for the success. 
engineers in energy, water, and environmental sectors have played a major role in the creation of civilization's infrastructure. All the problems in the nature and ecosystem services have made men, and they, means we, have to solve the problems before all for ourselves. Engineers and wider public are now recognizing problems we had made in past, and engineers have to find and propose rational solutions. Objectives, policies, operational legislation and reforms, including specific projects, have to conceive technical and economic intelligence in countries in transition, but without their own corruption. Everyone is entitled to good and healthy environment, clean water and sanitation, and sustainable and affordable energy, which entails the rapid transition from fossil fuels to renewables. There is a chance for undeveloped. The key is in sustainable and rational water, wind, and solar use, so that all society sectors and natural environment including in ecosystems, have a benefit. And from our web page, the main challenge for Southeast Europe SEE countries is to commit to and sustain the implementation of long-term reforms aimed at increasing competitiveness and promoting, and promoting sustainable, inclusive and balanced development as well as better integration between the EU member states, candidate and potential candidate countries and neighboring countries. An adequate response to this challenge will certainly require using the best available scientific knowledge and constant re-evaluation of the development process in light of the scientific findings. Therefore, it will be essential to enhance the scientific understanding, improve the long-term scientific assessment, strengthen the scientific capacities, and ensure that the sciences are responsive to the emerging needs. Along this line, a regional series of biennial Sustainable Development of Energy, Water and Environment Systems Conferences have been initiated to provide a venue for the researchers from the CEE region, but also for worldwide researchers and specialists and those interested in learning about the sustainability of development, to present research progress and to discuss the state of the art, the future directions and priorities in the various areas of sustainable development and regional integrations. Thank you very much. I would like to um, uh, thank uh, uh, Tarek, uh, and I would like to invite uh, now Vice uh, Rector for International uh, Relations, Professor Alexandra Nikolic uh, from uh, University of uh, Sarajevo. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much and good morning to everybody. Um, shall I wait to become uh, bigger or? <laughs> no, you can, uh, you can talk. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues, professor, professors and uh, participants of a such a great event, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Professor Dr. Rifat Shkreil, Rector of University of Sarajevo and myself. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis made it impossible for us to meet in person to discuss so needed long-term reforms in each part of the economy and society that will lead, uh, uh, will, uh, lead Eastern European economies um, and increase uh, capability uh, to craft more sustainable development path. 
In the same time, COVID-19 crisis outlining uh, the importance of re-evaluation of the development process, as Professor Kupusovic outlined it in his speech. Uh, that process uh, uh, should make uh, this event uh, and uh, the need uh, of re-evaluation re even more important. This is uh, clear that we need to find uh, new ways to uh, enable discussion, to make available best practices and knowledge to share experience and ideas. So, currently, social innovations led by technology and knowledge enhancement are a minimal pre precondition to sustainable, smart, and inclusive solutions to raise uh, quality for life for everybody. Therefore, social dimension of higher education is becoming a most important role for each university, including the University of Sarajevo. This conference will provide a space to discuss very important issues such as circular economy, efficiency of natural resources management and governance, capability to accept philosophy of smart transport industry and cities, and uh, such an uh, attractive, fulfilling uh, intellectual environment will push speakers to bring added value uh, to be even more motivated to share experience, knowledge, and ideas, making the results of this conference outstanding and responsive to emerging society needs. I wish you uh, all successful and fruitful uh, work, hoping that we will meet in Sarajevo again and that we will have an uh, opportunity to discuss such uh, issues. Uh, in uh, Sarajevo once again, because Sarajevo is, and Bosnia and Herzegovina and the whole region uh, is really uh, in the position that such speaks and uh, such uh, contributions are key to uh, future development of the region. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Nikolic. I'm uh, really sorry we are not uh, there with you. Physically, and I hope that uh, as Davis will come again to Sarajevo. Uh, we have now pre-recorded uh, speech from uh, a member of parliament from Croatia, Tonino Pizzula, uh, who is also rapporteur for Western Balkans. Uh, please. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to be here with you today and to greet you at the opening of the fourth Sustainable Development of Energy Water and environment systems for the Southeast Europe Conference. Like many other events due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I can greet you only virtually, but I do hope there will be opportunities for all to meet in person soon. As a member of European Parliament, I tend to connect these two topics in my work, the topic of sustainable development, primarily through clean energy transition, and the second topic, EU enlargement policy, as the other one. Hereby I would like to present my work so far and my priorities for the upcoming years. I'm also looking forward to follow some of the panels later on to get more information and ideas from that could help our work in Brussels. Being born on one of the Croatian islands and coming from the coast, I started working on the topic of energy transition four years ago. I proposed a pilot project that would provide technical assistance to the islands across the European Union. I wanted to help in developing their strategies and projects for transitioning to clean sources of energies. Islands seem like the perfect test zone in a way as they have plenty of natural resources. On the other hand, they are still heavily dependent on the energy transmitted from the mainland. The project proposal was evaluated positively by the Commission, later on confirmed by the Parliament and the Council, and we ensured starting 2 million euros for this. As a result, Secretariat for Islands was established, and in the past two years, more than 50 islands from all over Europe were assisted to create their clean energy strategies. 
the mandate of the secret secretariat was expiring while working on more permanent solutions. This year, I ensured another 2 million euros to continue its work by helping islanders to apply for funding and organize their tenders for projects they wish to develop locally. If anyone is interested, for these funds was published just last week, and I'm happy to provide more information. In addition to that, last week under the Croatian presidency, memorandum of split was signed between 14 European Union member states, and this is the first legal step towards establishing a permanent structure. I am aware that Southeast European countries might not be keen on following the energy transition of islands given their geographical nature. Anyway, I wanted to present the model of how sustainable development should be our overall objective that can also be pursued through very peculiar and uh, particular concrete projects. Given the success of the islands project and the interest in trade, I decided to expand the scope and replicate the similar model for rural areas, considering the great potential for energy transition they have. That project was successful and we expect another tender for the Secretariat in the coming years. I am very proud that both topics and initiatives were highlighted in the communication of the European Green Deal, our key document that will shape all of our policies in years to come. Even in the next generation EU proposal, sustainable development and green policies are set as a basis for allocation of money and EU recovery. As I already mentioned, topic of enlargement is dominating my political work for the two decades in the past, in different roles and capacities I obtained, ever since I signed Croatian Stabilization and Accession Agreement with the EU as a foreign minister. It has been a long path for Croatia to join the European Union, but I remain fully engaged in supporting the continuation of the EU enlargement to all six Western Balkan countries, as enlargement has proven itself as one of the most successful EU policies. It has also been the most effective foreign policy instrument, contributing to extending the reach of the Union's core values, meaning freedom, democracy, fostering peace and prosperity, equality, the rule of law, environmental standards and respect for human rights. Aside from giving a general message of support to the enlargement process as such, as European Parliament Rapporteur for our recommendations on enlargement, one of my priorities was to assert importance of including sustainable development of accession countries as an integral part of the report. The report was adopted just 10 days ago by the Parliament. <coughs> there were, we emphasized that the European Union should encourage the necessary energy transition to cleaner, renewable energy sources. It means away from coal and lignite, which cause serious social and health risks to local population and neighboring countries. Moreover, we call on the institutions to include Western Balkans accession countries in European Green Deal and just transition fund processes. I'm very happy that colleagues supported my proposal. The reason for it was to supply and to very be open to involve accession countries in these policies since the beginning, thus allocating them share of the funding instead of deepening their environmental gap and having them trying to catch up once they join the European Union. The report particularly emphasizes the importance for the future strategic economic and investment plan. It being designed to improve competitiveness, the legal and business environment, the situation of SMEs, and in particular, sustainable development in the whole region. Of course, in line with the commitments made under the Paris Agreement and European Green Deal. As you can hear, sustainable development is a core recommendation of the report. I'm also a reporter for the third generation of the instrument for pre-accession assistance, IPA3. In the previous report, I called for improvement, consistency, efficiency, visibility and transparency of union financing in the field of the external election. 
thereby advancing the union values and the alignment of IPA free funding with objectives of the European Green Deal. As we are currently negotiating IPA free instrument with the Council and Commission, I cannot share here too many details about the future instrument, but I can say that Parliament stays firm in asking for the adequate funding, a bit less than 15 billion euros for this program in the next seven years. We insist on placing sustainable development and climate action as a core objectives of it. I would like to conclude by saying that it's my firm belief how development in the future could be defined as development only if it's sustainable. On that note, I'm thanking you for your attention, congratulating you on your valuable work over the years, and wish you best of luck in assisting the countries of Southeast Europe becoming more developed and more sustainable. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to Nino and uh, thank you to all welcome uh, speakers. Um, Southeast Europe is uh, half already in European Union and another half is um, uh, slowly getting in. Um, as uh, much as uh, energy is considered, uh, there is energy community uh, which uh, covers uh, Western Balkans, but also Moldova, Ukraine, and Georgia. Um, and uh, the idea is to uh, slowly move towards European standards. Uh, we have introductory address uh, today from uh, 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 Milka Mumovic from uh, Energy Community. And uh, uh, she will tell us what is next uh, on the agenda of uh, energy community in uh, carbon pricing and uh, uh, energy transition. Uh, Milka, the floor is yours. Uh, if you want to put uh, to share your presentation on the screen? Yes, it would be. It is the plan. Yes. Thank you. I hope that you see my presentation now. Do you? Yes. Okay. But you have to um, uh, put it full screen. Yeah. Okay. First, let me to thank you all. Thank you to the organizers, ladies and gentlemen, academics, professors, for giving me the floor, opportunity, and uh, even privilege to speak to this audience a bit about the energy community and about the issues that energy community is dealing with that are relevant for the agenda today. Let me first mention a few facts about the energy community. I hope that most of the participants know something about it, and I hope that later they will be interested to learn even more. It is an international organization established in 2005. And in that days, it was called Southeast European community. But over the last 15 years, it extended, and now it includes the countries like Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. You can see here in the map, these are the yellow blocks. And over these 15 years, energy community is building its electricity and natural gas and other network energy systems to be compatible with that in the EU, with the aim to create an integrated European energy market, which will enable unobstructed cross-border flows of energy. The, the, key, the key issue of this idea was actually to reform from the beginning energy markets and to make them, as I said, compatible with that in the EU and create a pan-European energy market. This is at the core of the process. During this process, many elements were included. It started from electricity, natural gas, and security of supply. Over 15 years, as more, uh, um, more pieces of the puzzle were making uh, to, to fit together, other elements were introduced. It was security of supply, it was energy efficiency, renewable energy sources, statistics, infrastructure, environment, and now we are getting to deal with the climate. 
why we are getting with the climate. The, just this simple uh, graph can show what are the CO, CO2 emissions from fuel combustion by sectors. And we see how relevant the energy sector is. I think this uh, speaks more than any word that I can say at the moment. Over the years, our markets were slowly open for competition, as you probably know. Network operators are segregated from operators dealing in competitive activities. A lot of efforts, a lot of resources by many stakeholders were invested towards creating markets open for cross-border competition. And now we are at facing a real threat. And maybe somebody will call it opportunity, depending on the standpoint. But the threat is that all these efforts are at risks. And the question is actually here, what is going on here? It is that not only the Southeast Europe, or not only the energy community, not in the EU, the whole world is at the crossroad now. And the question of climate and the footprint of the energy produced and consumes on the climate and on the environment becomes more and more relevant. It is now relevant even more than the question of availability of fuels and depletion of fossil fuel reserves. There is academic community, policy analysts, interest groups, civil society activists, everybody is involved, everybody is very vocal on the urgency to decarbonize or to limit and decrease pollution and so on. And there are different views on how to do it. So at the moment there is the widest possible support to correct as many mistakes already made as possible and to act as urgently as possible. And we all know that uh, European Green Deal has increased EU ambitions toward 2030 and 2050 targets. EU wants to become carbon neutral by 2050. To implement this policy, many measures and mechanisms are, are in place. The uh, external, uh, external dimension of the European Green Deal is about continuing I will just go a bit forward with the slides which show actually the level of emissions in the energy community. This is just as, a, as an illustration to see where we stand. And now we are going to see that Europe is taking another more a direction to, as I said, to be carbon neutral and to get to its uh, uh, external dimension to create carbon border adjustment mechanism for selected sectors, which is envisaged to take place by 2021. Selected sectors to be target of this uh, carbon border adjustment mechanisms are those that are at risk of carbon leakage, which includes those that are carbon intensive or electric, 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 electric intensive. So this strong commitment to decarbonization in the EU with the Clean Energy Package and the Green Deal, in the absence of similar efforts of the energy community contracting parties could make a new departure of the energy community that will be opposite of the, the, of the direction in which European Union is going. And this is that risk. This is the risk that actually with the carbon border adjustment mechanism that the, our efforts to integrate our markets will go in vain. First, with this mechanism, nobody can say that ca market coupling initiative that are already being prepared and on the way that actually market coupling can efficiently take place at all. Nobody can guarantee it at the moment. Uh, we understand the position of the EU. It is quite fair if producers and suppliers from the EU uh, are paying cost of carbon and if those from the energy community are not obliged to do so to account for the cost of the pollution, this is not a level playing field anymore. So this initiative uh, from the European side, of course, is quite, as we cannot say, it, reasonable. And of, of course, it will, they will try and they are developing it to be a legitimate one. On the other hand, there is the commitment to Paris Agreement. Our contracting parties are actually committed to implement to, 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 to implement Paris Agreement or to commit to Paris Agreement. They are all actually signatories to it. So they have to take all endeavors to prove that their level of ambition 
corresponds with their commitments. And in that sense, European position, European Union position or Commission position in drafting carbon border adjustment mechanism uh, gives a concession which says that when designing a carbon border adjustment mechanism, the Commission will take into account the level of ambition of climate policies of third countries. So this is a way out for all of us to continue on the same way, to actually not to waste, not to lose any efforts already committed, but to go hand in hand with the EU and to make an effort that correspond to our, uh, with the effort and the level of ambition that correspond to our contracting parties' ability to do so where we really can see in this graph where we stand. These are the data for 2018. Previous data were for 2019, we have some of the figures, but to make full comparison with the EU, we can see that really we have uh, consumption uh, per capita, very close or similar to that with the EU, uh, consumption of fuel, uh, of course, is very high, but in when we compare it to the GDP, we are really exceeding. This is actually that our GDP is low, that we use energy in an efficient way, not producing sufficient value added. So this is a question for our policymakers. But nevertheless, the efforts have to be uh, made and some kind of action has to be taken. Energy community open debate on the compatibility of its power markets. With that in the EU, in the light of cost of carbon and in the light of power from fossil fuels. The principle that polluter pays is fundamental and the Energy Community Secretariat is trying and uh, with this debate to make the common understanding on common ground on this principle that uh, cost of pollution has to be internalized and this is the starting point. Pollution, polluter pays and this is the principle. The other point is that subsidies to uh, polluters should be eliminated. When exactly it will happen, there is still no, uh, no thought, we still do not possess a binding obligation, but the debate has to be open. Subsidies to polluters is basically negative cost of carbon. And this is even making this gap even wider. For the time being, we have all the initiatives uh, in some contracting parties started, for example, Montenegro from this year introduced a cap and trade system, kind of emission trading scheme internal for the, for the Montenegro, where they put a floor price of 24 euro per ton of CO2 equivalent, uh, but basically there is still two thirds, for, for the power sectors, the two thirds of, uh, of allowances are given for free, and this amount will be lower over time. In Ukraine, there is already a carbon tax, and it is, rather symbolic, but nevertheless, it is in place and they are now considering new climate law. Uh, the graph here shows actually an estimate of the energy community that we uh, published last year in the study with, this, uh, with the funny title, Rocking the Boat. And this was just the point of this document, uh, it, the objective of the document. It was as the last call to thermal power plant operators to wake up and revisit their uh, development plans in the light of imminent obligation to account for the cost of carbon. Of course, neither the energy community or the contracting party will not just jump into obligation without considering all uh, consequences of it, uh, the background, the objectives, targets, impact, and so on. This is uh, also an, a, a graph from this, um, from this document, Rocking the Boat, what is keeping a power producer from coal in the energy community afloat, where we actually identify that there is, of course, carbon leakage, that this could lead to trade barriers with the, with the EU, this would lead to disintegration of the market, that there are still, still state aid and subsidies present, and that uh, there is no fair price of emissions to allow demand to react to scarcity. In this we think that scarcity is scarcity of fresh air and clean waters. We see that cross subsidization also persists, cross subsidization uh, between customer categories. And we saw that there is kind of uh, keeping uh, coal fire power plants afloat is uh, also defended by the fact that it ensures low prices for wide population and poor customers, which is actually kind of twisted uh, social policy measure. 
and this is also an issue that should be uh, elaborated further. This uh, work on this on this document is, uh, as we envisaged, continuous. We want to keep an um, uh, updated information of the level of subsidies, of the level of state aid, of the level of costs of operation, and based on this, the impact that any introduction of uh, carbon cost would bring to those contracting parties. And uh, to work on this, the energy community uh, launched the study. It was in the last quarter, last uh, year, 2019, with the aim to shed more light on the available policy options, which would be carbon pricing design for the energy community. The objective is to assess and propose an effective carbon pricing mechanism, and in the longer term, let's say more than 10 years, to prepare uh, contracting parties for joining EU emission trading scheme. There is no explicit task and deadline when to join, just to be compatible with it, and at a certain point before or at the latest when contracting party wants to join EU, that they are compatible and able to join. Within this study, uh, there will be performed comparative analysis of the current status, analysis of different possible scenarios, and final impact assessment with policy recommendations. It should be completed uh, this year, we hope, in the third quarter, but with the collection of data, as anybody who ever works with data uh, already know that to provide reliable, verified, and complete data is the most demanding task, tasks of all that, uh, can, that, can, uh, that can be put on, on, on a, a researcher. And uh, with uh, this plan, these are the scenarios that could be run. We are in consultation with all stakeholders. The position of the Energy Community Secretariat is not to introduce a solution. We want in this study, which is assigned to eminent uh, consultant, to run different scenarios. And which scenarios will it be? We want also to consult our stakeholders. And many stakeholders are involved from an environmental task force, a technical working group on, on climate, all generation, uh, representatives of all generation plants that are fueled on coal, ministries, of course, in charge of energy, ministries in charge of environment, and so on. So this is very wide debate, and uh, we are really uh, looking for input and contribution from all to get this study performed in the best possible way. And the question in designing such a scenario and play in the modeling is actually that uh, we think will all these players contribute to the outcome with maximum social welfare. It will de depend on the ability to design, uh, or to design such a such a design that will address all these issues and to be flexible to all technical, economical, legal, and other systems to accommodate any new initiatives. Scientific approach to any policies about the need to change the behavior, uh, to change the energy consumption patterns, for example, in order to make the sustainable electricity possible. And this would be, mean smart incentives. And all about smart incentives would probably be the most and the best choice that any policy maker could undertake to design smart incentives. But here is, of course, as we all know, here is the catch. Smart incentives are very nice and easy to design in theory, but extremely difficult to design and successfully implement in practice, as any modeler or analyst would confirm. To design incentives, we have to make certain assumptions, and the key of this is uh, that all players will behave reasonably. And when analyzing uh, 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 last several years in our uh, uh, analysis last year, uh, we cannot prove that in the, for the economic point of view, the behavior of players was always reasonable, but it is from, the, from one standpoint, from, from an individual standpoint of each player, this player behaves reasonably, but we do not fully understand the incentives and priorities of these, uh, of these players. So the longer perspective, the more difficult to identify who are the stakeholders as new players will emerge and we don't know what is reasonable, profitable or sensible for them to do. But this journey has to begin. And as always, it has to begin with the first step. 
I personally believe that the first step has already been made. It is the recognition of the need to travel this journey. This journey. And I would repeat what Professor Kupusovic said, in local language it sounds much nicer, Valja nama preko rijeke, or we are to cross that river. And uh, with this, I will conclude my introductory remark. Thank you very much. I really uh, wish uh, you and us all a successful conference, and I'm looking forward to listening to the panels. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for um, a very interesting introductory uh, 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 address. Uh, I see we have questions, but uh, uh, we need to continue with the program that will be a possibility to ask questions to uh, Ms. Milka Mumovic at the panel session. Uh, though I still have uh, three minutes, so uh, um, I could let uh, Carlo put the question, but I don't know, maybe in chat. Now, uh, Carlo is uh, not writing the question. Okay, um, please keep the questions for, uh, uh, for the panel session, then we will, uh, uh, you will have opportunity to ask uh, uh, further. Uh, now, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, just a second to put uh, the PowerPoint back. Uh, okay. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Marco Ban, who is our IT uh, uh, chief, uh, who devised the virtual conference uh, system uh, to tell us about the conference rule. Uh, Marco, the floor yeah. is yours. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, so as Nevin said, uh, and uh, you probably know from the dozens of emails uh, that were sent to you in the past couple of weeks. So we, we are having uh, an online conference uh, and uh, for this purpose, we devised our online conference platform, which uh, from the statistics, I, uh, I see that uh, around 140 participants out of 180 already accessed. So uh, I believe the most of the participants are already uh, 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 accustomed to, to, the, uh, to the platform. So. Uh, the things uh, will work as a video on demand system. So uh, uh, similar to YouTube, you can watch every presentation. So we have uh, uh, 186 uh, videos available for you to watch in the next uh, five days. Uh, uh, and uh, feel free to watch them all. Uh, simply ask questions if you have comments. Uh, so this is not a, a, a normal uh, uh, a normal conference with the live live sessions. Uh, you have enough time to watch the video, enough time to come up with an excellent question uh, and uh, hopefully uh, the conversations and the, and the discussion will be uh, will be very nice. Uh, the platform was tested already on one conference this year and it proved to be quite successful with uh, just over 100 uh, participants uh, posting uh, almost uh, one and a half thousand questions and comments. So we hope that uh, with uh, almost 50% more attendees this time, we will also have as much as, uh, uh, as, much as comments uh, during this conference. Uh, the rules, as Nevin said, are uh, basically the uh, chairs and moderators have been notifi <coughs> notified sorry, uh, about their tasks. So their main task is to uh, keep the discussion uh, lively. If uh, uh, nobody asks the question for the, for, the, uh, for the presentations in their session, they are obliged to 
uh, uh, to ask at least one question to the to the authors. Uh, uh, and uh, if there are some inappropriate comments, uh, simply do let us know. Uh, all authors will be also obliged to respond to the questions. If not, uh, uh, it will mean basically the same as if uh, this is a no-show and uh, the, the presentation might be uh, withdrawn from the final proceedings and will not be included in the pool for the uh, special issue uh, uh, publication and invitations. Also, we will have several, uh, uh, as you already received by email, several sessions that will be uh, held live online as this one. So uh, the, uh, the sessions will be two, two special sessions, uh, all invited lectures and the panel this evening. So do join, uh, all the links, links have been uh, sent by email. Uh, they're available in the comment system when you log in. Uh, they are also uh, updated live in the conference platform, so there's at least three ways to find the link to the currently session which is being broadcasted live. All sessions uh, express this, uh, except the special sessions will be recorded and also made available uh, 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 on our YouTube channel after the conference. Um, Final session will be, so all the sessions are also uh, done as uh, Zoom webinars uh, to, to uh, ensure a good flow of the session and uh, uh, less, least technical issues, uh, except for the closing session. And I would like to, uh, at this point already, invite everybody to the closing session, which will be held with the uh, uh, Zoom meeting option. So everybody can join with their camera so we can take a group photo. Uh, but you, as, as you already know from uh, whoever was on Zeva's conference, you will be notified a couple of times before. Uh, and also we will uh, post all the links for the Zoom sessions for the next day, uh, the day before in the evening. So today uh, in the evening you will uh, receive all the links for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's uh, live sessions. Um, I think that's it. If you find any problems, if you find any technical difficulties using the platform, uh, send an email, uh, write it to, uh, to me or to the reply to any of the emails you receive from the system. And uh, I, I'll uh, make sure that everything is resolved in due time. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, I would like to reiterate one uh, point uh, to put it more strongly. Um, all the participants uh, want to see your answers. So authors are absolutely obliged to respond. That's why you have uh, 24 hours after the questions stop to respond. Uh, in Gold Coast, it worked very well. We had only one paper canceled because the authors didn't respond. This is what we are going to do here also. Authors are obliged to respond. So please follow the rules. Uh, we have to have a good uh, scientific discussion. It's absolutely the must. Put questions, but also uh, respond uh, to, the uh, to, the uh, to the questions. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, close the opening session.